G'day everybody, Sam Marwood here from Cultivate Farms where our whole reason for being is to try and make your farming dreams a reality. Uh, we connect you with investors and retiring farmers and whoever you need uh, to make your farming dream a reality. And today, uh, very excited uh, to introduce you to the local food loop and specifically Patrick O'Callaghan. I'll say good day first and then I'll introduce what Patrick does. How are you, Patrick? Thanks for joining us, mate. Good day, Sam. How are you doing? Well, thanks, sir. Very good, very good, mate. And uh, so the reason why I've got you on is um, you're in this new world of connecting uh, farmers with consumers, uh, and we are all for that around getting uh, farmers uh, to value add and to get a premium for their uh, produce or even just connecting with their customers. Um, so excited to have you along and for you to unpack the local food loop. It's a great name. What a really cool name. You must um, must be proud when you thought of that one, mate. Um, so first off, what food do you buy direct? <laughs> um, yeah, I was thinking about this. For, for us, it's, it tends to be mainly our proteins and specialty items. So we buy a lot of our meat, eggs, cheese, you know, direct, um, and then things like olive oil. And then when it comes to uh, other stuff, it's kind of seasonal, I guess. Um, we're not on a farm. We've got a backyard veggie garden, so we grow as many of our veggies as we can. So, you know, veggies that we that we can't grow, we'll buy those direct when we can from farmers markets. But as far as pure direct sales go, um, it's really that sort of meat, eggs, cheese that uh, that tends to be the bulk of our direct purchases. Yeah. So you are li you're living the talk. <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah, I'd like to say I'm living the dream, but at the moment it's the talk. But yeah, we like we really try and put it into practice. We've got you know favourite egg supplier that's just a couple of minutes out the road here, and they're also supplying to some of the other places near where we live. But you know, as much as I can, um, I try and get out there physically to their farm gate. They've got a gorgeous little farm gate actually, um, and you know buy the eggs direct because you know that well they're fresh and you know they're also the money's going straight to to the folks that make it. So it's better all around. So it sounds like you're just a happy customer and that's probably why you've built this. Is this what the experience you're getting with people who are using the local food loop? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really just a way for people to find out what's out there. Um, and for some people, they might use it, you know, half a dozen times and get to know what's in the neighborhood. And then, you know, a month later, something else might pop up on the app to say, hey, there's, you know, a new opportunity to buy something. Um, but yeah, people generally using it as a way to locate their, their nearest farm gates. Um, but we're also finding that farmers are using it and people who are producing products, like, for example, there's a, there's a dairy that had some, some new cheeses on the market, and they were looking for places who might stock their cheese, so they use the app as a bit of a reverse lookup thing. Um, and when it's OK, well, if there's these you know, 16 places that are already selling local produce in the region, I'm going to go and talk to them because they might be able to stock our product as well. So it, it actually works both ways really well. That is very cool. I, I haven't thought of it like that. That's... Um... Yeah, both ends of the market uh, can value or benefit from this. That's really good. Um, you can yeah. buy you buy some of these eggs from these chooks here as well, Patrick. Um, I'll sell them. Oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, why why do you care about uh, buying direct and buying locally, um, and why should others care? What's this? What is what is this going on in your head that makes this yeah, so important? Yeah, yeah. Look, there's there's a, a few reasons, but I guess the the two main ones, the first one, it's really selfish. I just love good food. Um, and, and, you know, you can see my head now, but if you can see the rest of me, you, you'd know that I really like my food. Um, and it just tastes better. No, seriously, it's, it's fresher and it comes with a story. And I guess food's not just about putting stuff in your mouth. Food's about respecting the food where it came from and, and acknowledging all the things that went into making it. And if you get food that doesn't come with a story, then for me, you're kind of missing out on half of the experience. So that's that's a pretty big thing. And secondly, even though I'm not a farmer, I grew up on a farm when I was little, spent a lot of time on farming. Um, and so I know the effort that it takes to get a beast to market or to get a cauliflower out of the ground or to put milk into a can. Um, and I think so. It's just a matter of that kind of respect for the effort that goes into it. Um, and so those two things together just make you know local food just real food for me. And as much as we can, um, it's great on a personal level. It's great but on a selfish level, um, but I know that it's also good to have respect for the people that are growing it. I love it. So obviously that desire has driven you to spend your life trying to get this uh, local food loop happening uh, and succeeding. Can you explain it better than me uh, and a quick outline of, of how it works, both from a consumer and a, and a, a producer's point of view? Yeah, sure. Look, it's, it's actually um, embarrassingly simple, Sam. 
Um, so Local Food Loop is a phone app and it connects people who are growing or making or selling food um, with people who are looking for it. It's kind of that simple. What it does is it provides a way to showcase the food that's out there. Um, it's got all sorts of people on it. It's got you know cattle farmers, lamb farmers. It's got um, dairies. It's got farm gate stalls. It's got pickle makers. It's got all sorts. You know berries in season. Basically, if, if you can grow it and buy it locally, then the app aims to get all those on there. Currently, got just under a thousand places on there. Um, and most of that's concentrated in Victoria. There's a growing number in Tasmania, and interestingly enough, Southeast Queensland is just going to come on board of its own accord, and uh, we've got a growing number of uh, producers up there. So that's really it's really good to see that organic interest, no pun intended. Um, but it certainly is is growing really really well. So with all those people there and their connection in many cases with farmers markets, um, so farmers market networks, and you know all people that are coming. Sticking stuff in their trail at four o'clock in the morning, driving it down to the farmers market, selling it out there. It's just another way to promote all the opportunities for people to actually find and buy local food, so they can support uh, those who are getting up at four o'clock in the morning to make the drive. Love it. So we we deal with a lot of aspiring farmers, Patrick. That's probably our main audience. So people maybe who don't have a farm yet, but maybe they might be leasing or have a small plot. So watch. Should I be planning, if I was an aspiring farmer, uh, to sell direct? Uh, uh, should that just be the first thing I think about or is there, should I wean myself onto it? How do I go about understanding whether this is for me? <laughs> yeah, look, it's, it's an option that I would say is definitely worth considering and there's, there are some great examples of farmers selling direct who have made a really good go of it and, and it's turned out to be really good for them. Um, that said, it's not just going to fall from the sky like everything in growing stuff. You know, it takes effort, it takes hard work. It's just a different type of hard work because you do need to build an audience. You need to get people who love you and who love your product and will rate out your product. We know that social media is a huge part of that now because it's a way that people access information about, you know, where they can get food locally. So there's a, it's a lot, like a whole other skill set that goes around it. So you can't just say, okay, I'm going to grow – I'm going to grow a sheep this year. I'm going to sell my sheep. I'm going to put it out the front gate and see if anyone's interested. There's a lot more to it than that. Um, I think that um, people who are working in co-ops, for example, tend to have a lot of successes. And there are some that well, I think you and I both know of who have basically you know, sold their entire year's worth of product a year in advance. Yeah. So when you get to that level, you know that it's a really successful model, but there's been a huge amount of effort going into that. So should people consider it? Yes, they should consider it. Should they explore it? Yes, they should explore it. Um, but be prepared for you know a, a decent amount of work to build up um, your customer base and people who will rave about you, so that you can uh, sell direct in that fashion. Love it. I'm gonna get rid of that rooster in a second, but um. So I'll get rid of the I'll get rid of the dog then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's a really interesting point, and this is what we're gonna encourage from every one of our farmers is to build an online presence. So. Uh, Instagram, uh, to have the chooks in the background and roosters crowing. Instagram, Facebook, it, you've got to almost have, you've got to have a following, Patrick, to be able to make this app really work for you. Um, it, it seems like that's yeah. a key thing. Yeah, without a doubt. And, and one, of, one of our challenges has been, you know, building up the number of places that have got profiles on the app and building up the number of people who are using the app because it's one, you know, you can't have a million people using it and nowhere for them to find anything on the app and likewise you can't have a million places on the app promoting their stuff and no one's out there listening to it so it's been that gradual build across all sorts of platforms not the app but you know as you said instagram twitter facebook etc uh, and they're all like a little little ecosystem of awareness that you that you need to use together and really concentrate on building yeah i love it so so how much extra money will i make uh patrick's doing this rather than you know the conventional ways of selling like you should, your baseline, if you think about what you're doing, you're selling direct. So straight away, the difference has got to be between your wholesale price that you'd be selling into a, you know an aggregator, or as I call them, the mystery meat box. Um, if you're selling into mystery meat boxes, then you're getting a wholesale price. If you're selling direct to customers, then you're getting a retail price. So there's your difference straight away. And then the great thing about it, I, I talked about stories with food before, that's what people put a premium on. So if you've got an awesome story, backed up by an awesome product, then your retail price to direct customers can be and usually is higher than the retail price that your product would get 
um, if it went through the wholesale chain. So, you know, just at that, you know, dead simple thinking, um, you've got to be able to command a higher price that comes straight back to you as a farmer uh, rather than going through the mystery meat box. Oh, okay, that's cool. But uh, I guess that's just balanced with um, knowing that you need to market yourself. But it feels like nowadays my generation and uh, younger are on their phones all the time anyway. So marketing probably, would you just do that between 9 and 10 when you're watching TV anyway. Um, so it's really not that much more effort. <laughs> yeah, we just, everyone just does it in their sleep now, right? <laughs> Oh, that's great. All right, so um, we've got something exciting to announce, Patrick, because uh, we've known each other for so long and we trust each other and we see the value in what we're both doing that you've kindly offered an amazing uh, arrangement for all Cultivate Farms members. Um, can you outline that uh, what it is, uh, just generally, uh, and also maybe how people could use how you encourage people to use this thing you're, you're offering to Colorway Farms members? Yeah, sure. No worries. Um, yeah, so basically what, what we what our goal is to get as many people on the local food loop app as we can because that's going to make it more useful. The more people that promote their products on there, the more we all get seen. And so that's why in things like social media, we really encourage all of our places that are listed to kind of cross-hag each other and cross-hag local food loops so that the word just gets out and builds because, you know, we're, we're no Yelp, um, we're no Facebook, but we're, a, you know, we're a pretty important part of the local food promotion in here in Australia and we certainly want to grow to become even more significant. So by joining local food loop, everyone kind of gets to help each other and you know, we give each other a leg up and, and make sure that, that our profiles all stand out. So with that in mind... Um, people who are part of Cultivate, um, you know, we, we're going to offer a discount through Cultivate, and Sam, you'll have all the details of that. Um, but basically, people can come on at a really sweet price, um, and it's pretty cheap anyway. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a low bar of entry um, as far as the price goes, but we're really looking for quality producers to come on there. Um, and then, of course, once you're in there as a, as a listed place, then you get all the promotions through our social media um, that we provide as a matter of course. Uh, and lots of people see your product, not just through the app, um, but people will see your product through Instagram, Facebook, etc. So it's just another way to add a really useful layer that's really targeting that niche market of people who know enough about their food to care, who care enough about their farmers that they want to know more, um, and who are actively looking for the produce that you know can and does and should come off farms more direct to their plates. Patrick, it's brilliant. Thank you very much. And uh, we're really going to encourage everybody to make full use of that. Uh, I'm thinking even if you are an aspiring farmer and you've got 10 chooks, uh, I reckon you should get on here and start just learning how to sell and promote yourself. Um, this is the future. Uh, and even if you don't have your dream farm yet, you should be working as hard as you can uh, to build the skills. So jump on there and just play around and sell good produce and make people happy. There's people out there who want you to make them happy. Uh, so go out and make some great produce. Totally. So, Patrick, what is the future of food purchasing uh, for the future? Say 2027, uh, we're sitting here doing another interview. Uh, what's what's different? How do we, how's it all happen? Yeah, I, I actually think that, uh, well, there's, there's things that are driving the way that people buy stuff at the moment. Um, it's definitely online. Okay, there's, a, there's so many more online sales, and that's only going to continue. It's going to get easier to do. In fact, we're going to be building an, an online shop um, function within the app very, very soon. So by 2027, 20, it'll definitely be, be in there. So on, online shopping is really important. Convenience goes along with that, I guess. But relationships, I think, is a big thing. You know, social media is all about relationships. Knowing your farmer is all about relationships. Um, having community-supported agriculture that's sold out a year in advance is all about relationships. Food co-ops are all about relationships. So it's this interesting blend of people using their phones as tools to make orders and to make purchasing decisions, but still having these, you know, person-to-person -person interactions in real time over the fence, at the food hub, you know, wherever it is that they're, they're accessing their food is also where they're going to be accessing their real relationship with the farmers. So I see that, you know, future of food, if you like, in, in another 10 years, it's going to be this interesting blend where the phone is just a tool. It's not actually the place where you talk to people anymore. Um, this is me just predicting stuff. But, right. you know, it's, 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 it's what you use. You use it as a tool to get your, your shopping done, but then 
you're shopping in that way because you know that there's an opportunity to have that relationship with um, the people that are making the food for you. That's my hit pip. We'll see. Let's let's talk again in ten years time and see how how spot on we were. I think it's great. I think that's the way people should think about online anyway. That it's a it's a gateway to real face to face relationships. Um, I think if people think about it any other way, they've sort of got it wrong. Um, and people worry that people are online all the time, but really it's a way to connect with people in real life, like we have. Like right, if exactly. Still be yeah. online here. We're still. Uh, connecting, and I think that's that's the way we should be looking at it. I love it. I love your prediction. Um, so, from your experience, Patrick, with the um, producers, have you got any examples, or just even general examples, only farmers who are really having a crack and um, doing really well, and maybe some tips around why they're doing so well with using the local food loop um, app. Yeah, there's a couple that come to mind um, near, near here, but and I think that the, what they've done is they're really focused on producing quality products. I think that's that's the key thing. Something that stands out from you know the landowner next door who's been doing the same thing forever. People who have had to innovate, you know, they're backed into a corner and they say, you know what, this isn't working. What can we do? And they come up with what well, might look like a bizarre random idea. But they go with it and they push it and they believe in it. They're the ones that are really successful. So on, on one hand, you've got people who are taking their products and turning them just by maybe some simple value adding. Maybe it's not so simple, but they're turning it into something that's a really high quality product, and that just gets attention. Um, there's an example of a, of a goat cheese dairy down here. Um, they've been operating for around about three years, and in that three years, in fact, even just last week, they won. You know, a national award for their product. And you think this is just a really small scale operation. They've got national recognition. They, they're commanding great prices. Their product is in demand. Um, the alternative might have been what? You know, sell your milk at a really low rate to an aggregator and get not much for it, not much recognition, not much motivation to, I guess, because a lot of it's about feedback, isn't it? You know, if, if you're selling really good product and people are buying that, then that's a great feedback loop. So it's, immediately it's more satisfying rather than saying, oh, yeah, I produce commodity X and off it goes somewhere else and that's the end of it. So I think there's a lot of personal satisfaction to come out of that. The other people that I see being really successful are people that are trying lots of things to see what works. You know, there's an example around here, someone who's, who's growing <laughs> who's growing pigs, berries, cut flowers, has a cafe out the front and stocks products from other people's small-scale farms in the area as well. And they're just seeing what works. And some of it does, some of it doesn't, but it's all about raising awareness and providing an opportunity to promote that really high-value-add product no matter where it comes from. So I think they're, they're the things that kind of stand out for me at the moment. That's exciting. And I think everything you're talking about is what we talk about, hustle, trying things, getting out there, having a go. <laughs> Um, so again, I think that's why we're excited to be working with uh, you, Patrick, and Local Food Loop, that um, it's just another way for people to get some reward for their effort. So if you're out there having a crack, um, there are ways and there's people, there's organizations and apps that are there to help you really succeed. So, mate, thank yeah. you very much for your effort in putting all this together. We really do appreciate it. Keep up. You're there. very welcome. Thanks for having me on. Where and where do we? Where would I go uh, if I wanted to Google you in the meantime, or go to your website, Facebook? Yeah, you go to localfoodloop.com, uh, and if you have a look on there, there's a little button up the top, and it says Go Premium. So jump on that. That is basically giving me a really brief background information, um, and then we'll set up some stuff for you. Get your listing happening, and you'll be on the app really quick, quickly. No, it sounds brilliant. Uh, again, thank you very much for your time. Apologies for the rooster crowing a lot. Um, but uh, <laughs> all the best. And uh, yeah, again, everybody out there, make sure you jump on, check them out. Um, and if you sign up as a member with Cultivate Farms, you get that sweet opportunity with the local food loop. Uh, thanks again, Patrick, and we'll speak soon. Okay. Cheers, Sam. Thanks a lot, man. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.